If you haven't already, make sure that you reset your stitch so that you're not using a basting stitch. I just reset my, mach my machine because that was the fastest way to do it. Now I'm going to start stitching this together. Now remember that you folded over and pressed 5 eighths at the bottom and that's because these should be pinned together. So that is the 5 eighths that I pressed up and we're going to start our stitching there. So this is a permanent 5 eighths inch stitch. I'm just going to stitch, back stitch. turn it at 5 eighths. So I need to stitch just a tiny bit more. All right, there, that's 5 eighths. If it feels like your machine is having a rough time stitching through your stay tape or your ribbon, just remember to go slowly. If you stitch more slowly, it should be able to handle it a little better. keep filling underneath and you just want to fill underneath to make sure that you haven't grabbed anything that you're not supposed to be so that you don't have weird catches of fabric inside your stitch. see how mine is wanting to bunch up that's because my lining has a lot more stretch in it than my nicer fabric so I'm just going to try to help that through there as best as I can hopefully without sewing my fingers in there as well get to the top, turn at my 5 eighths. Okay, now this is where we have our basting from before, whenever we put in our stay tape or ribbon. So now you want to try to sew slightly to the left of that line because you want to encase that stitching inside there. That way it doesn't show. trying to stitch at 5 eighths, but also trying to keep in mind that I may need to go slightly over from 5 eighths just to encase that stitch so that it doesn't show. Okay. getting to the front, which is where our dot or our center marking is. So go as slowly as you need to here. I'm going to be careful when I do this. And I want to keep this right at 5 eighths, so I'm ignoring any other stitches that are here right now. I'm just going to keep this flat and keep it at 5 eighths. And I'm going to keep it right at 5 eighths until I get to that pin. 
and that center stitch line. So right there. Then I'll take out the pin. I'm getting up really close on it quickly because I want to make sure that I'm absolutely on that stitch. I need one more. There. And then once you know you've caught that, you want to line this back up at 5 eighths. Your machine should have additional markings down here at the bottom, so I know that that's 5 eighths. Put my foot back down and carefully start stitching again. All right. And now I'm just going to continue on. Once again, trying to encase that basting that I did before. get better and better at guessing what 5 eighths is. It's like the universal sewing stitch. Okay. 5 eighths. Now this section I had to do a little bit of fitting so here I'm actually going to try to stitch right on top of my pins especially since doing that other side of my fabric where I know that my lining is wanting to stretch out. Hopefully you won't have to do that with your fabric. I have a cotton as the right side of my fabric, but then I have a cotton with a little bit of stretch as my lining. So that's causing me a little bit of grief, but not too much that I can't deal with it. on top of cotton so this is easy to stitch. stitch on top of it like I'm doing right now. You can also take it out, but I am too impatient for that. All right, and then I'm just going to top stitch on that little spot. Okay, that is now a very, very strong corner. So this is what you should have now. So now that you've finished that stitching, you just want to flip it out as best as you can and check for any puckers. Make sure your seams match up nicely. Just look for anything that looks unattractive. 
okay? And as long as you can't find any puckers that need to be fixed, you're okay. If you do find puckers, just take the little stitch out and do a little back stitch and fix the spot. Once you've sewn together the right side of your fabric and your lining, this is what you should have. I'll just show you the sides here. So this is all, this is closed, this is closed. Then we have the front where we did our pivot. And of course, the same thing on the other side. Um, the one thing that I also wanted to show you, which is important for the next step, is you want to do your understitching. But before you do your understitching, you might want to do some pressing. I like to go to the iron and try to iron my seams open as best as I can. Now it's difficult to iron these open flat simply because of how they're sewn together, it's awkward to do it. So what I usually do is, this is what you will probably have before you iron. I just open it out flat like this on the ironing board and I press all of that open. And then when you get to the shoulders, I press them down and then just continue on. And that makes doing the under, the under stitching much easier. So I would recommend that if you feel comfortable doing that. I am going to take this to the sewing machine now and I'll show you how I do the understitching. So now we're ready to do our understitching and make sure that you're not using a basting stitch. I always have to check mine because I'm a big fan of basting. Now for your understitching, what you want to do is open out your piece, so open out your bodice piece, and you're going to be stitching the inside selvages of the lining to the lining itself. So how do I make that less confusing for you? If you go to the inside you have your lining so it's a little bit hard to tell in mine because my lining is partially cut out of the same fabric but this is my lining and this is the right side of my fabric the part that I want people to see. So the inside selvages that you have here you want to press towards the lining and you're going to be stitching all of that together for as far as you can. And that will make more sense when you see it. So just grab wherever you feel comfortable when you have those together. You don't need to put also your, the rest of your ribbon or your stay tape over there. Just grab, grab it as it naturally lays. Flip it over and make sure that you are stitching on the lining side. So this is my lining. Here's my seam and this is the right side of my fabric. Now I'm just going to put that through and I'm going to start in this, the, the closest spot that I can and that's because I can't open this seam out all the way. And using a regular stitch, I'm just going to stitch that down as far as I can. Make sure you keep filling underneath while you're stitching this seam so that you don't get any weird puckers stitch, back stitch a little, and you're stitching very close to the seam but not on it, just very close to it. And go as slowly as you need to go. And what this will do is when you wear your garment, it will keep your lining from popping out and showing in an unattractive way. So understitching seems like it's something that probably doesn't affect your garment that much or probably doesn't do that much, but it actually makes a pretty big difference. All right, now I'm getting into my lining part so it should be easier for you to see this. I feel a little bump there, just gonna make sure that's flat. You do want to keep this flat, but don't pull on it. Just let it rest naturally. And you'll see I'm getting into a tighter space here. And that's because at some point I will have to stop because I can't go any further. It's getting bunched up here. That's because I'm getting to a point where I'm going to have to stop. 
I can definitely go a little further. Sometimes if you move it around underneath, you can take it even further. Definitely take it as far as you can because it will really help out later. Okay, and I'm going to stop here because I can feel the fabric wants to bunch underneath and I do not want that. All right. So that's one side done and I'll just briefly show you somewhat what this looks like. All right, so this is the part that we just understitched. So if you start to turn out this fabric, I won't turn it out completely because I need to keep sewing through here. You can see what this understitching does. So let me flip out my corner here just to show you quickly. Okay, so this is the part I just understitched. This is how I will be wearing the dress. So you can see how that makes a nice line here. Once I give this a good pressing, it will be nice and flat and clean. That is exactly what we want. So now whenever we wear it, that lining is being held in place and it's not going to pop out where people can see it. So that was only one side that I did. I need to do the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find my my lining, which in this case now I'm sewing this way, so my lining is on this side, the right side of my fabric is on the left side, so I'm going to push the seams towards my lining, like that, and then I'm going to stitch those together. <coughs> Gotta love that squeaky, squeaky machine sound. So back through making sure that those selvages are towards the lining. Double check that you are sewing on your lining and not on the right side of your fabric. And here we go. Stitch, back stitch. Once again, sewing close to the seam, but not on top of it. Fill underneath to make sure that you're not grabbing anything off. closer to the front now so it's wanting to get a little bunchy on me. I'll go as far as I can. Can I go a little further? Just a little bit. And then back stitch. Okay, so before you start trimming this, which will be the next part, you will want to flip this out and you uh, want to make sure that you haven't sewn anything together that you weren't supposed to. This is a really good time to make sure before you start trimming things. Okay, so I'm not going to completely flip my straps out and honestly I probably can't flip them out until I trim them a little bit more anyways because there's so much fabric in there. Okay, so that side looks good. This side looks good. I'm going to see if I can do my front here some more, but in order to make the front easier for me to understitch, I want to do some trimming first. So I'm going to trim out the sides here and the sides here, and then I'm going to come back and try 
to understitch this some more, that it will be significantly easier if I trim out some of these straps. All right, so let me show you how to do the initial trimming now. So the sections that I have understitched are the sides here. I haven't touched the front yet, so this is the part that I need to trim out, my side section. So I'll flip this to the other side so that you can see my estate tape substitute and all of that stuff. I'm basically going to trim all of this out as much as I can without actually getting too close to that seam. And then when I get to the corners, I'm going to trim those at an angle. And you'll see that that's important later. Whenever we actually turn these out, it will become obvious why that's important. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And then once again, when I get to the corner, I'm going to trim that at an angle. All right, so now I need to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to understitch the front here. And then I'll come back and trim that out and I will show you all of that. So let's go understitch the front now. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I know that this is the front of my fabric, so I want to push my selvages towards the lining. So I'm just going to hold those together and then flip that out. And now I know that that's where I need to stitch. So you can decide um, if you want to start at one side and try to do it all at once, or you can do one side at a time. I'm going to try to stitch mine all at once. meaning that when I get to that V in the center, I'll start pivoting. My selvages are wanting to pop up on me, so I'm just pushing them under again. There. Mm, nope. Do not change my stitch. Thank you. <laughs> and then start as high up as you can. And then continue on. And 
Now this is my front point. So I'm going to try to keep that straight as much as I can when I come through here. You can see how that will want to bunch up, so just keep moving it around there. You can see it's flat. If you move it around, eventually you will find a section where it's flat. go as far as you can. Alright, that's about as far as I can go. Okay, so we'll just take this out, then flip it to make sure that you don't have anything strange, any strange puckers or anything like that, especially in the front of your dress. It's okay if it puckers a little bit because you're you're going to have to iron this to get it to lay really flat. But see that? See how there are no there are no gathers or weird places where the stitching is popping through? That is what you want, okay? So it's okay if it feels a little bulky. You're gonna trim most of that out, press it, and then it will make a nice V. Okay, so this looks good. I don't see any anything that needs to come out. So, I will take this back to the table over there and I will trim the excess fabric out. So let's do that together now. So here's the front. I'm just going to start trimming this out. It may actually be easier for you guys to see here. Yes, okay. I'm just going to go ahead and taper that corner. or not stitching, sorry, start cutting, trimming away the excess. This is why I'm holding the fabric underneath because it's easy to accidentally let go of the, the lining underneath. Be careful when you get to the center that you don't cut into things that you shouldn't. And you do want to cut slightly close to that V, so pretty, pretty close to it. Alright, and I'm going to go ahead and trim off this because it's driving me crazy. And this one too. And now I'll do the same thing for the other side. Here's my shoulder. I will trim that corner at a slant and then just start trimming away the excess fabric. As I'm getting closer to that V point again, I will trim very close there. 
Alright, now last but not least, we trimmed the corners of our shoulders, but we still, still need to trim the excess fabric. So these are the top shoulder straps. I'm just going to cut off the excess fabric there that we don't need. So don't cut through the stitching, just cut close to it. If it looks like it needs a bit more trimming at the corner, go ahead and do that. If you, have too, if you have too much fabric at the corners, it really will not, it won't turn nicely and it won't look nice. So trimming to it, rounding it out, rounding out the next one, tapering that seam. Now we can actually fully turn this out. An excess piece of fabric here, there we go. I'm just going to check to make sure that I don't have any more loose threads hanging around anywhere. No. Looks good. Okay, yep, so we can start flipping this out. Oh, I found one. Excess thread, gross. Trim all of that away. Goodbye, thank you. Okay. Now we can flip it out. It may take you a second with these straps. That is okay. So flipping it right side out. You may have to take uh, something and push it in here just to get your straps turned out. I usually like to use one of my large crochet needles to do that because I find that it's just the easiest way. Just whatever you use, make sure it's not something too pointy because you could stick a, a hole in your fabric pretty easily. So make sure whatever you, you use to push those out, it's something that's rounded. So, obviously I need to finish pushing my straps through, but you can see what the rest of this looks like somewhat. I still need to get my crochet needles and finish turning these out. <laughs> so, at this point you should finish turning it out so the right side of the fabric is on the outside. Go ahead and trim away all of these excess threads. Be careful you don't cut through your fabric. Slow and steady wins the race. So trim all of those away and you will also want to go to your ironing board and iron your top as best as you can so that all of this lays flat. Now if you trim out excess fabric uh, at the top of your V here and you press it and it's still not laying flat, what you can do is go to the inside and you can cut a little bit so that that seam will lay more nicely. So just make sure that you do not cut through the lining. Mine is fairly close so I have to be careful here. Um, I'll just show you quickly. So this, this is my V and I'm going to cut just a little bit into that excess selvage there. Just a tiny bit. Don't cut through the lining. Okay. And that will help that piece to lay a little better. Do the same thing here. Just a tiny bit. Just a smidge. Okay. And then you can try pressing it again and that should help it to lay flat. Okay, so basically when you press this, it should lay nice and flat like this. It looks like I'm not going to have any problems with mine, but just in case you do, that's something you can try. So flip yours out, trim off excess threads, give it a really good pressing, clip the front a little only if you need to, 
and then come join me again. So here's my bodice after I finished pressing. I'm very happy with the V in the front. It's clean and it lays flat. Uh, the straps are pretty. See here are my straps. They look nice and they're turned, turned out. And also my sides. So almost all of the top here is essentially done. The last thing that I want to do is move my button markings to the outside of my fabric. And that's because um, whenever I sew the buttons on, I'm going to need the right side of the fabric, not the wrong side. So on these pieces, I already marked on the wrong side where the button needs to be. So now I'm just going to transfer those markings to the right side of the fabric. And if you didn't mark these, it's your piece two. So piece two has these markings. And if you just line this up with the back, you can make that marking if you forgot to do it beforehand. So I'm just putting in pins at these two spots. Then I'll flip this out again. And now I have a place for my mark. I'll just take my pen or pencil here, I should say. And just go right over top of that. And if you're afraid that you won't be able to see it later, for example, mine is kind of hard to see because I'm using red, but I also don't want to use any color other than red because I don't want it to show through. You can also just leave the pins in as a marking. All right, so I may actually do that on both of these instead. That's one side. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Flip it out. There are my markings. And since I know now that I'm going to use the pins, I'll just put them in this way. So you can either use your washable uh, marker to mark those. You can use pins. Just make sure they're marked so that you can find them later, How, however you want to do that. You can also use, I like to use pencils sometimes because if you don't make it too dark and you're working with cotton, it's pretty easy to erase pencil later. Right. I'll just put those back in again. That is my iron over there telling me that it is on and hot and ready. There we go. So where those two pins insert into the fabric, that's where my button is going to go. So this is basically done for the moment. I'm just going to set this aside and then grab my skirt pieces because I'm ready to start working on the skirt.